Good morning, happy Sabbath. If you'd like to find a seat. We'd like to welcome you to Sabbath School and our first song today will be number 213, Jesus is Coming Again. Hymn number will be 577, In the Heart of Jesus. Hymn number 577.
Our next song is going to be song number 626. In a little while, we're going home. next song is going to be hymn number 223, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Hymn number 223.
please stand for our opening song, When We All Get to Heaven, hymn number 633. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Emily Atencio and I'm the junior class president and I just like to extend a warm welcome to you on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Please bow your heads with me as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come here and worship. Please gain, help us to gain a blessing and help us to use all of our talents to glorify you. In your name I pray, amen. amen.
Happy Sabbath, Church. Sabbath. Beautiful Sabbath morning, amen. amen. The offering this Sabbath goes to the South American Division, where they're starting to plant a church and health focused community center in Brazil and acquire a property for a church and community center in Salvador, open a youth focused community center with English language school in Peru, and establish a church and medical center also in Peru. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this Sabbath. Help us to learn something new today and about you. Please bless this offering and please be with South American Division. Jesus, I pray. Amen. Be honest, guys. Did you like it? Theo, it was amazing. Really? Really, really. I loved it. That new song you did is definitely a keeper. I still don't like the third verse. I wouldn't change a thing, but then I'm not the musical one. What about you? David. Huh? What? The show. Did you like it? <laughs> not at all. David, be nice. What? You asked for honesty. I did, and I appreciate it. Uh, would you like... Uh, say a little bit more. Was it the song choice, my singing? Your singing's fine. The song choice is great. It's just that when you come in here and you sing like the way you do, you bring all the annoying teenagers who don't know how to tip. You're still a teenager too. Yeah, but I'm mature enough to make a judgment like this. 
Young people don't know how to tip. Man, I'm gonna miss you guys. Are you working tomorrow? I wanna hang out one last time. Yep, here till six. I'm free, but I'll be packing up for most of the day. That's right, you're leaving soon too. Tuesday afternoon, mom and dad, dad are driving me. Off to Southern, where all the boys wanna be preachers and all the girls wanna marry one. It's not like that, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> when I visited, it sure felt like it. I could never do the Southern thing. Could you, David? Yeah, college isn't for me either. Well, I don't, en I don't envy you. The temptations you'll face at the number two party campus in America? That's not an invitation for trouble, Theo. It's a call to missions, to spread the gospel from the sociology building to the co-ed dorms and every place in between. I'm sure you'll find time for both. Sociology and co-ed dorms? Evangelism and trouble? Like you won't cheat curfew for some late night Taco Bell runs? A creative artist needs fuel in the wee mornings, the wee hours of the morning. Was he supposed to eat grapes? So long as you get what you want of that, out of that school, I don't see any harm. I've been praying about going, where to go to college for years now. Yeah, since sixth grade. Totally not an obsession. I just want to be sure about God's calling in my life. Yeah, you sure did. I've never seen someone struggle so much about one decision. Neither did I, which is why I took the path I did. Into the secular world full of heathens and sinners. To the best law school in the state. When some wise guy decides to pass a bill that you can't sing songs about Jesus anymore, you'll want someone on the other side who can help you. Yeah, lawyers for Jesus, still an oxymoron. Are you gonna let him talk to me like that? He has a point. Your legal fees just went up. Promises, promises. You know I'm joking, right, Kim? I sure hope so. Yeah, I am, I am. A lot of prayer went into both of your decisions, and I know you'll both be successful. As will you. <laughs> yeah. At the rate I'm going, I'll still be an ice cream server when our 10-year reunion hits. God's got a plan for you. You'll find it. I don't know about that. Why not? Well, the way I figure it, some people were meant to lead, others to follow. You were called to lead people to God and worship. You were called to defend the faith. Me? I'm just the guy that makes sure ice cream doesn't melt. That's not true. No, it is. And it's okay. I already accepted that I'm not one of God's elite. There's no such thing as an elite Christian. We're all called to serve. Yeah, so say the megachurch preachers and their self-help books. So says the Bible. Not my Bible. Last time I checked, we used the same translation. Theo's right, David. God's calling isn't for a privileged few. It's a privilege we all share. A privilege? It's too much responsibility. We've been given a gift that we can never earn on our own. God saved us from sin, and it's our responsibility to share that with everyone else. Well, hey. You, maybe you guys are right. You're the experts on this. But until God calls me, I'll leave all the heavy lifting to you guys. You could also pray about it. I suppose. But I'm in no hurry. I mean, what if God calls me to Africa? Okay, Mr. Melodrama, have it your way. I'm just saying. Here, have this. What's this? Uh, just a little something. Oh, boy. Not a Bible study, is it? I'm First Peter. Oh, boy. You know, how long have you had this? Three years. Well, I would hate to separate the two of you. No, no, take it. Whenever a time comes where you need to find what God says about your calling, read it. I appreciate it, Theo. No problem. Ready to go? Yep. Promise you'll hang out tomorrow night. What possible conflicts could I have? Good. We'll see you then. All right. Bye, guys. See ya. Can I help you? Give me a sec. Oh. Bonilla? David, is it? Yeah. Uh, how's it going? Oh, it's going. Oh. Can I get a, let me see, a small vanilla cone, please? Sure. Anything to go with it? <laughs> no, I think that's enough backgrounds for today. Okay. 347. Been working here long? Yep. Since January. Hmm. How do you like it? Well, I'm not going anywhere this fall, so take that for what it's worth. Staying home, huh? Yeah, no point in spending 20 grand when you don't know what to do with your life. No, I suppose not. So, you're going to Beantown soon, right? Beantown? Yeah, you know, Boston College, cheerleading scholarship. Change plans. Change of plans? Yeah, I decided I don't really like Boston anymore. Really? But that's the place where everybody knows your name. <laughs> that's exactly my problem. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, long story, you don't want to know. 
Well, I mean, I'm here and I have a lot of time to work on it. If you want to tell me. Give me a sec. Hello? I'm out. Eating an ice cream. Why are you being so nosy? No, Mom, I don't want to discuss Boston College with you, okay? It's not like if I, it's like if I asked you if you wanted to discuss the decision you made with Dad last weekend. Sounds like somebody has issues. Well. High school's over, Mom, okay? Like, it's not like I'm gonna graduate college with a bachelor's in cheerleading or, you know, become a cheerleading cheerleader, you know? Even the cowboy Dallas, Texas cowgirls and cheerleaders need real jobs. Oh, mercy. Sounds like a job for Dr. Phil. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. What? But you are a chosen people, a, ro a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Oh, I know you're not talking about me. I'm just a lowly coffee boy, and she's Miss Cheerleader Thingamajigger. <laughs> nah, this is not for you. It's just that good old Protestant guilt. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asked you to give a reason for the hope that you have. No, Mom. Like, you don't understand me. I'm not going to talk to a counselor. No one does, okay? Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body has do is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. So what is this? Is this the part where I go to the girl who was so far out of my league, we never talked through all the years of high school. It's just like that TV show, Save the Cheerleader, Save the World. Well, I'm the wrong guy. I'm not a counselor, I'm not a theologian. I'm just a guy in an ice cream shop who knows how to listen and can fumble around the Bible just a little bit. What do you expect me to do? You know, Mom, I'm not gonna speak to you. I'm not gonna go to a counselor. I'm not gonna speak to you, and I don't know who, I don't know when, but I'll know when the time comes, okay? Love you, bye. Do you ever have one of those days, David, where you just feel like the whole world is out to get you? Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully, ad faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. <sighs> All right, don't know what your plan is here, but She's not exactly an open-minded spiritual thinker, but if you think I'm your guy, we'll see how it works. Sounds like you're having one of those days. You have no idea. Tell me. Hey, while we set back up, I just want to say a few quick words um, about what we just watched. So a lot of us, um, a lot of the adults probably have already struggled um, with this side. And as it's very relative to our seniors right now as some of them may not know where they're going possibly for college or what they're doing after this graduation weekend. You know, they might go home, but they don't know, am I gonna have a job? Am I gonna go somewhere and am I gonna make an accomplishment? But we just wanted to show that through this skit, that God can use people where they're at. So, thank you.
Sabbath church. Today I'm going to start with prayer. That's our heads. Dearly Father, the thank you stays today. Please be the salon and I as we're doing Sabbath school. Please just help it to be your words, not ours. Thank you for the beautiful day that you've given us. Amen. Acts 13 verse 36 says, Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors. Proverbs 19 21 says, Many are the plans in the person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Isaiah 46, verse 10 says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. One of the most difficult decisions a person must make is what they are going to do with the rest of their life. Especially at this time in our lives, most people don't know what they're doing. They're not completely certain on what they want to do with their lives. Some people may think that a purpose and a calling are the same thing, but in reality, they are two very different aspects of your life. Your purpose is to be in a relationship with God. It is why he created you. Psalms 139, 13 to 14 says, For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and I know this very well. God wants to know you intimately, all the good and the bad. 
and once you discover a relationship with him is what you need, then you have achieved your purpose in life. From there, you can now discover your calling. Your relationship with God will help you with your calling. Communication with him and a careful analysis of your God-given talents will bring you to a good conclusion. Sometimes your calling changes depending on where, are you, where you are in your life. God may want you in different places at different times, so your calling may shift. But don't worry, because as long as God is present in your life, he will guide you. If you're worried about what you're going to do with your life, we have a couple questions you can answer for yourselves to really determine what your calling is. Okay, so this is something that we found. It's called like the calling test. And so the first thing you need to do is describe your personal God-given calling. So basically, what experiences or how has God spoken to you about what he might want you to do? And the second thing is you can define the difference between the talents and the gifts that he's given you. Third, take the time to create a list of your natural and given talents. Now you have to take time to list your God-given talents. And how do the two, and to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life, you want to discover how the two intersect in such a way that they fulfill or could fulfill a life call. Who will you then serve with these gifts? We'd like to take some time now for some discussion questions. Um, basically, we'd like you guys to just get into like small groups of the people around you and talk about these questions. We'll give you a couple minutes of opportunity to discuss each question, and then we'll just get up and announce the next one. And when we're done going through all four, we'll um, get together and discuss all our answers as a group. So the first question is, what are some practical steps for growing your relationship with God and fulfilling your purpose?
Okay, if you want to quiet down. Our next question that we have for you guys is discuss Bible, or I guess it's not a question. Discuss Bible characters who experience a calling moment in their lives. So we'll actually discuss that for a few minutes. And some of those examples are like Moses, David, Esther, Joshua. Just each one. Okay, the next question we have is, talk about a time when you thought you knew God's plan, but things didn't work out the way you thought they would. The next question that we have for you is, how have you seen God's calling in your own life?
So we're going to discuss our answers now. We're going to have some roaming mics. So if this, we're going to go back to the first question. If you have anything to say about that your group said, you can raise your hand and a mic will come to you. So um, what are some of your answers for what are some practical steps for growing your relationship with God and fulfilling your purpose? The easiest thing to say is in any relationship, if you don't spend time, you're not going to grow your relationship. And so one of the best practical steps for growing your relationship with God is prayer, is prayer and Bible study. And then I think something that we don't do enough as Christians is we don't listen. We're so busy that we, you know, we, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please help us to have a good, great day. Help this food be good. See ya. Talk to you later, God. And then we go about our day and, and we, don't, we don't take the time to say, hey, God, um, give me a, you know, give, tell me what you want me to focus on today. Um, and and I, think, I think spending time asking God for guidance and then listening to what he has to say, looking for those answers. I guess finding things to praise God about throughout your day, uh, just finding um, those little pockets of space where you may not be doing anything. At least that really helped me here at, at GLA was, um, well, working the farm. I had a lot of time where, you know, I was doing work, but I could think a lot. And so that was my time with God where I could just, I could just let him know what was on my mind. And uh, I think just pra praising him for the things that he has done for us is a great way to, to grow with him and find our purpose in him. I think the first part is pretty easy. You know, personal, personal Bible study, devotional time, church attendance, Sabbath school attendance, those sort of things. But when I think of that last statement there, fulfilling your purpose, you know, we're all meant to be missionaries. And I think for most of us, it starts out small and grows. And so we have to start off being involved in church outreach and things like that. And eventually the Lord will, will take another step with us and another step and another step and lead us step by step to our inevitable purpose. But he trusts us with more things as we are faithful with the small things. To kind of go along with what he just said, this business of reaching out to other people for the purpose of sharing with them the, the gospel message, that builds your relationship with God because you can't do it by yourself. You really need God and his relationship to help you. I think finding somebody to help, somebody who's struggling somehow, uh, does a lot to do both, to grow your relationship with God, because you can't do that on your own power, not do it well anyway, and certainly to fulfill your purpose, because in finding, uh, in helping others, you find uh, your purpose in God's will. I think that what might be practical for me might not be practical for someone else. And we have to remember that um, we're all on a journey and we're at different rungs on the ladder. And God accepts us where we are. And when we think about practical, uh, a practical step for growth, we have to each individually decide what's practical for us and it's going to be probably different for everyone. I think a good thing to do might be to prayer journal, but um, you know, and if you're used to praying only maybe a few times a week, try to step it up and pray every day a week and get closer to God. Any, anything we do to get closer to him, he will bless us. Okay, so the next question was, discuss Bible characters who experienced a calling moment in their lives and what did that moment look like? So.
For example, um, like Moses at the burning bush, that was a pretty big calling moment for him and it was very clear, you know, God spoke to him from the bush about exactly what he wanted him to do. And although most people now haven't had that opportunity, um, that's pretty miraculous. I think that um, kind of like what we were talking about before when God gives you small things and then bigger things and bigger things, most Bible characters that you think of had more than one calling moment. And I think we also have multiple calling moments. When you think of David, you know, Goliath was a big one. But I think for him, a big calling moment was when um, Nathan said, you're the one that stole the poor man's lamb. He had an opportunity there to be bitter and shut down and sit, you know, off with your head. <laughs> but he didn't. And I think with us, when we, when we recognize the small calling moments and follow God's leading there, we can handle the bigger ones, the more important ones. Esther had a huge calling moment. I, I can't imagine what went through her mind when she read that note from Mordecai that said, this is, this is it. Um, our biblical example was Elisha and how he was working in the fields, preparing for the bigger calling of being a prophet. And it just takes that practical application when we focus on these smaller things and we master them. The Lord can use us in bigger areas. Um, I think another person uh, would be Gideon, um, where the angel came to him and told him that, you know, that he had a special calling. Um, to save Israel from the Midianites. That was one that came to my mind. And I was going to say Gideon also, but one aspect of Gideon is that, you know, what makes the calling moment a memorable experience is that Gideon never saw in himself what God saw in him. So he was surprised when he was, when he was identified as a man of valor, and he's like, are you talking to me? Are you discussing me? Because he never put himself on a high pedestal. Um, one of the, I thought of, it kind of ties into the next question after this, and that was uh, Saul, who was, thought he was doing what God had asked him, or what he felt was impressed to God to do, and that's uh, persecuting those who were following the false Christ, which was Jesus, they thought, or he thought was false. And, uh, but then on the road to Damascus, um, that false Christ uh, made his presence known and identified himself as Jesus, the one whom he was persecuting. So it was just interesting that that calling had changed, and it ties into the next question, I think, in a way that, you know, how, you know, when you think you're doing something that you're supposed to be doing and then realize that uh, you're not. And that was definitely a situation with Saul. I think of Mary. Mary was called to, to raise divinity. Um, and what her response was is just incredible um, to think that she was willing to take on such a huge responsibility. And she did it with God's help. And, and each one of us, um, that our parents are called to do the same, even though our kids may not uh, be divinity, <laughs> for sure. But, um, <laughs> but it is an incredible calling to, to raise children, and um, Mary did it with such grace from the Lord. My, my son Benjamin, um, was talking to me and said, Dad, you need to talk about Jonah and uh, his calling. And uh, I thought that's an interesting, uh, interesting story. There was a comment um, earlier about uh, those that think they're called but uh, to do things and then they, um, you know, realize that they need to make adjustments. Well, Jonah, you know, really has some challenges. And uh, for me personally, it reminds me that Sometimes when we don't answer God's call the way we um, would initially have hoped we would and we have those regrets, um, that God, God is, is more persistent. And I'm glad he's more stubborn than us, you know, and uh, he keeps working with us. And uh, 
He did that with Jonah, and uh, he does that with us. He, he has a way of bringing things back around, back around, and say, hey, how about this time? How about this time? And uh, that's our God. We're going to take the hands that are up right now, and then we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, I, yeah everyone does get a calling. And in Matthew 19, uh, 16 to 22, it talks about the rich young ruler. And it's just a reminder that not everyone does accept the calling that God gives them because it says in verse 21, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. And the man, man said, heard that saying and he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And this to me, it's just a reminder that God gives us a choice. We can't accept the calling that he gives us and we, we don't have to, but it shows how much he loves us. He doesn't force us to do, do he doesn't force us to do what he, he knows is right for us because he does love us. I was still gonna talk about Jonah. The other day I was reading the story to my granddaughter and in a way for her to understand. Some, most of us sometimes we don't feel comfortable talking to people at work or at school or even in a supermarket. But if God tells you that that's what we need to, how to spread, spread the word, that's the way we need to do. I had experienced before that um, even in an uncomfortable position that we have, we are maybe shy, but God wants us to go and talk about him and the wonderful things that he can do for us, or maybe just help somebody. We don't have to mention God at that moment, and then we can... Um, start a relationship with that person just because you helped them and somehow that they were in need at that time. Matthew twenty two fourteen says, many are called but few are chosen. And I think one of the things that as we talk about people that, that were successfully called in the Bible, um, it, God requires action when we're called. So I think something to think about as you juniors become seniors and as the seniors become freshmen again, um, when, when God calls us, he asks us to do something, and the more that we accept that, you know, as, as Dean Sheridan talked about, um, making us, um, being faithful in little things leads to, leads to bigger and bigger things. When God calls us, he's asking us to do something and pick up, you know, pick up whatever he asks us to do and, and get it done. Okay, our next thing that we had was talk about a time when you thought you not knew God's plan, but things didn't work out the way that you thought they would. Well, I had to laugh when I saw this question because it felt like my life. Um, <laughs> But we started off uh, as a line worker. I was line working in Grand Haven, and we felt the call to quit our job and go to Emanuel Institute. And so that's what I did. And then with no job, came home. And then the Lord called us to the Detroit area to Bible work. And we did that for a number of years. And through the tutelage of some godly men put in our lives, some that are right here in this room with us today, um, the Lord transitioned us into pastoral ministry. Well, then, we thought we'd reached the pinnacle of our ministry, and he would just leave us there the rest of our life. We were pastoring a district right here in this area with some amazingly godly people in it, some of whom are in this room with us today. And then a man named Delwyn Garcia gave us a call one day and asked us if we would be interested in being the head dean. So I think... Our life seems to just fit this question. Uh, we didn't know God's plan, and he has us where we know he wants us today. Amen. Okay, the last question is, um, how have you seen God's calling in your own life? Um, I'm going to kind of just touch back on the other question, ladies, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, when Mr. Beal and I were married for five years, we thought we should have a family, and that meant doing the normal things that people would do to have families, and um, didn't realize that God had another plan. 
And so that other plan happened after we were married for 14 years when we went to China and a little girl was placed in our hands. Mm -hmm. And I think that so often, even in the decisions that we think seem to be normal in our lives that we just can make on our own, that we have to really go to God with those because his plans are not always our plans and we have to be open to that. Mm -hmm. But I think you all might agree that are here glad that you're kind of glad we went to China and got that little girl. <laughs> The highest calling any of us can have as parents is the training of our children. And, um, you know, that moment when you decide to have children, that is the first calling in your life. And uh, I'm so thankful to see so many parents here that have made that so. And I'm so glad for the children that we've seen here that it has been a success for many of them. And uh, we want to always keep that first in our life and not let other good things uh, crowd that out. Happy Sabbath. I think uh, we are the parents of the twin graduates, Patrick and Freddie. We come from Indonesia, long way, coming here for the graduation, mm -hmm. but want to share our experience in Indonesia. I myself am a nurse, and our children are doctors, medical doctors in Jakarta, a very, very big uh, city in Indonesia. But then um, uh, my husband and I uh, were um, work as a missionary in the very remote areas in uh, West Kalimantan, West Borneo areas. Uh, I think uh, we are being called by, by God to proclaim the, the truth, to bring the good message to the very, very remote areas there. And uh, in short, we started the clinic. We put up our own clinic and uh, through the clinic, we reach out people, not only through medical or health matters, but rather to, to spread the gospel. And in short, in these remote areas where there was none Adventist member, now has grown into 1,600 1, people. And then we built churches in very, very remote areas in mountainous hill of Dayak areas there, around 10 churches. I think God has prepared us to prepare people wherever unreachable, unreachable mm -hmm. and they have known the truth through our clinic missionary work. Praise God, we accepted this calling and praise the Lord. We will be surfing also, still until now, to the very, very remote areas in Borneo, in Indonesia. Thank you. Amen. We have learned a lot this morning about discovering your calling, and we want to end by sharing some verses and wisdom from the Bible. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, you guys all know this, for I, have the plan, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Uh, the verse from the skit this morning, 1 Peter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Job 42, 2 says, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. Proverbs 20, verse 5 says, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork, created in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepares in advance for us to do. And then the ultimate calling is Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for joining us here this morning, and please be with us as we lead into this church service. Um, help us all to discover what you want us to do with our lives. In your name, amen. amen.
Thank you so much, juniors, for leading us this morning in Sabbath school and for calling us to be purposeful in doing God's will in our lives. We're going to spend a little bit of time this morning lifting up the name that is worthy to be praised, Amen. Jesus Christ. I invite you to take out your hymnals and turn to hymn number 248, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And why don't you stand and stretch your legs a little bit, 248. for his love this morning. I had the love of dear friends this week. I had a busy week, as many of you did, I'm sure. And I was so blessed and thankful for friends who kept asking if I needed help. But I'm also so thankful because the Bible tells us we have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Let's turn to hymn 186, I've Found a Friend, 186. 186. 